Good morning to all of you. I'm only going to put a fairly quick video up today. Um, as I say, I'm still uh, suffering from a blooming sore throat. And um, when I'm speaking, it seems to come out all wrong. But before we start, I've got to mention something which, if it wasn't for the fact that it was dangerous, it was quite funny. I was just listening to a local station and they were doing a, a little program where people can phone in and ask questions. Anyhow, I was just listening to it, not, not really taking uh, much attention to it. But someone rang in and said, Oh, or words to that effect, why have we got two pin plugs? And I thought, well, we've had two pin plugs for years, uh, be it the English version, 5 amp, or stuff which is bought abroad, which is the continental two pin. But anyhow, he was uh, sort of querying this, and I thought, well, that's a funny thing to talk about. He said, oh, you can get adapters to use them. So I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I was going to give an answer back, which is hard because uh, you dial uh, their phone number up and of course there's loads of people ringing in with queries and answers. So I didn't get through. But what amazed me, some person did get through, a so-called engineer, uh, well, electrical engineer, and he says, oh well, it's only 110 volts in the, uh, the bathroom. The rest of the house is 240. So I thought, what the hell is he talking about? Anyhow, I tried to, well, hearing this, I tried to ring the station up to, to put them to rights because I'd hate to think of people going into a bathroom thinking they can only get a shock of 110 volts. Anyhow, they wouldn't let me on. I don't know why. Might have been because I got a croaky voice. I don't know, but they didn't let me on. I tried a couple of times. I'm not going to bother again. It's a complete waste of time. Anyhow, someone at the end did explain that the person who rung in, a so-called electrical engineer or, 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 or the electrician, wasn't very clear what he said. And fortunately, he did explain. So he more or less explained the things that I would have said. So I just don't know why I wasn't allowed on there. I hadn't been banned. They didn't know me. In fact, the last time I uh, rung into that radio station was ages ago. And we're talking about years, so I don't know what it was. Anyhow, I thought I'd mention this because, you know, all the things you hear are not the truth. Um, people may think they're talking right, but they're talking wrong. Anyway, let's get back to that. This is only going to be a quick, a quick video. Um, we'll start off with this lovely large daylight lamp. It's American. And it gives you an idea of the size of it. It's, um, there's the filament. I'm not getting too involved. I want to keep this fairly short. It's high wattage, I believe it's about a thousand. It's got a large GOS cap, uh, GES, that's Goliath Edison screw, or as the Americans say, uh, Mogul. There's a, it's quite old, this lamp. I don't know the exact age, but it's quite old. So, anyhow, we'll leave that and go on to some halogen lamps. Now, my knowledge on halogen lamps is very limited. But you've got a few there. Um, various wattages, various voltages. These will have been used for um, space lighting, a floodlight. Or, in some cases, uh, they were used as heating for electric cookers but there's the group of them there not going to too much into uh, detail with those 
There's your lamps. Quartz halogen. Now this other biggie. We're back to sort of uh, normal lamp types, which I probably know a little bit more about. This is by Philips. It's a photo flood lamp. They call it a photo arga. And that's quite a high wattage. These photo flood lamps are so bright that the life expectancy is a matter of hours. So if you've got one of these and you want to display anywhere a light, put it on reduced voltage and that will show it off nicely. They're well made lamps actually. They're the unusual base. That uh, insulation part is probably insulates the cap from this metal part at the top there and also probably prevents heat from travelling down because you can imagine the heat on one of these working will be quite high. It is a worker but as I say I would never put it on full voltage. I don't want to blow it. And now we've got a, another lamp here. See the filament? It's a carbon or a Kohlenfaden as uh, you would say in Germany. I've actually got a, where is it? Oh, it's over there. Oh, I'll show it next time. Um, <clears throat> there's a lamp, that's a 200 watt, 240, 250 volts. Uh, made by Mazda. That's the English Mazda or Mazda BTH British Thompson Houston. It's a beautifully made lamp. So we'll say that. And it was probably used as heating, a heating lamp. Because these do produce quite a bit of heat. As I say, well made. There's the actual filament, which is carbon. It's connected to the the uh, feeding wires in there by a carbon paste. You can see the two little. I get my blooming fat finger out of the way. You might better see it. Um, it's in like two blobs. And also on the support wires, they're also held by little blobs. Hey, I've got a couple of uh, discharge lamps. This is quite a low wattage lamp actually. Um, I don't know if that's showing up on there. Let's turn it around. I always put it around, around the wrong way. It's a Luca Lux. It's 50 watts. High pressure sodium or natrium uh, lamp. There's the arc tube. This one is actually brand new. Made by GE in Hungary. That silver ring, I have mentioned this before, just refreshing, it's due to a getter, which is a device which is fired high frequency juice or current from outside the tube. This is after the lamp's made and evacuated have these you can see it yes those two little rings well, I did it two or one that's one on this this case that little ring there that would have held a chemical and it's fired from outside and the result is that silvering and the reason for that is to get rid of the last traces of air or oxygen that might still be in that lamp so when you see a sodium lamp 
for the natrium damp lamp its silver is due to the little getter you also get this on radio valves the reason they're silver look at another one this is a higher wattage one by the way this is uh, let's have a look at the wattage 150 watts uh, this is by Osram it's made over here made in Great Britain and once again this has the same arrangement at the base it's actually got two two little loops which would have held the uh, the chemical that they fire to reduce the last traces of oxygen and there's the resultant silvering on the in inside of the glass if subsequently air should get in afterwards this part would turn white it'd be like a flaky white on the side but when it's nice and silvery the the lamp has, has got a, a good vacuum also refers to valves do you see a valve with this white effect the valve said to gone soft which means it is you have entered it or en the air has got into it but not in this case once again let's show the arc tube this has had a bit of use as you see by the the uh, the uh, the blackening at each end of uh, the arc tube needless to say both with this lamp and that other one you need to use a ballast in circuit you can't just screw them into a lamp holder and expect it to work if you did that it would be an almighty bang and probably get shattered with glass so always use with the proper control gear now before I go um, I'm going to ask a question I don't know why it's there here we've got a lamp it's actually made by a well, well a maker of very good lamps I'll show the name on there it's coming up it's Dr Fisher now Dr Fisher is a lamp manufacturer which makes I say specialist type lamps they're certainly not the normal range of lamps and they're normally very well made but what we're talking about in this lamp which has got an unusual filament very very tiny if we can show it up let's put it on there but also just below the filament on one of the lead in wires there's a little plate welded on there I want to know what that's for there we are I can show it now a bit better there's the filament and there's that tiny plate which has been welded on to that lead in wire that's on, on the right hand side as we look at it the filament looks like a, a coil coil it's obviously a special lamp uh, there's no indication what it's for it's got 6 volt it looks like 14 amp like it's obviously not 14 amp so it's probably 1.4 amp I think it's 1.4 amp you can see it on there so if anyone knows what that is I would love to know as I say this uh, uh, not all these lamps but the smaller lamps have came from uh, uh, that collection up in uh, Yorks, uh, Yorkshire and this was one of the lamps next one up is nothing too expe too special 220 volt 40 watt on the base it almost looks too small for that kind of wattage 
but it's obviously used I don't know what it was used for to be quite honest it's what's known as a candelabra screw which is a little bit smaller than our small Edison screw there's the lamp there doesn't appear to be a name on it I would say it is American filament is obviously intact being 2 220 volts it was probably been made to be used on the continent because they did at one time stamp their stuff 220 volts anyway coming on to the last bulb <clears throat> and this is a <clears throat> a wee bit of a mystery it's got on there UV now as far as I'm concerned it's not a UV lamp but it says it is um, UV recorder so if anyone knows what a UV recorder is I'd love to know it's, it is as you can see GE <coughs> it's American GE Mazda and underneath it says burn base down so you have to operate it that way round to my mind it's possibly a kind of projector lamp but why does it say UV recorder so that's, that's the other mystery anyhow thanks again for looking any comments or has anyone got any ideas what they may be I'd certainly love to know just before I go let's have a quick look at a few Nixies there's several there um, these are obviously for indicating uh, numbers in most cases goes from 1 to 9 it's really a um, multi electrode neon lamp here's the information on it what it is I think it's mullard Yeah, I believe it says, says Mallard at the top there. Foreign made. It could be made anywhere. There's another one there made by Hivac. That stood for the high vacuum uh, lamps. They made lamps as well. They were one of the lamps that are now I believe called General Instrument which is a branch of Chicago uh, uh, miniature and Hivac was one of the names they used along with Vitality and Trivita Trivita a very old name and my uncle at the time I was very well I don't think I was even about then um, so it went back a long time probably 1930s my uncle was asked by a lamp making firm to test various bulbs on his bike his bike had a, had a dynamo so the faster he went the brighter the lamps went and um, the maker would obviously select which of the were the best lamps to be used? I'm pretty sure they were Trivita. The company, I think, was up in Suffolk, somewhere in that area. And that time, my, my uncle was quite a keen cyclist. 
but as I say, it was probably 1930s, it was a long time ago. Whether he was telling me a porky, I don't know. I was only, obviously, this was when I was a kid, so he might have been telling me a porky. He was known to tell some uh, some lies on, on things, so we'll wait and see. Anyhow, thanks again for watching. Any comments, please make, and I'll get back to you. Thanks again. Thank you.